We are in Unit 4 Functions, and our lesson is on Relations. So this will be Lesson 2, Unit 4, Relations. So look, take a look at our standards. Um, we are preparing for Standard 8F1. We're going to understand that a function is a rule that assigns to each input exactly one output. The graph of, of a function is the set of ordered pairs consisting of an input and a corresponding output. Okay, the mathematical practices that you're going to be using in this lesson will be to make sense of problems and persevere in solving them, construct a viable argument and critique the reasoning of others, model with mathematics, and look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. Our question for the day is how can we model relationships between quantities? And in order to do that, the things you're going to need to learn are how to express a relation as a table and a graph, and how to determine the domain and range for each relation. So by the end of the lesson, you should be able to do both of these. Okay, we're going to take a look at some vocabulary. So um, each of these words, I need you to add to your vocabulary page. First is the coordinate plane. A plane divided into four quadrants by the intersection of the x-axis and the y-axis at the origin. This is what our coordinate plane looks like, where you have the x-axis, the y-axis, with your intervals tick marked. Okay. On your vocabulary page, if you want to draw a picture of that coordinate plane, that may be helpful for some of you. Next word, ordered pair. A pair of numbers used to locate a point in the coordinate plane or the solution of an equation with two variables. An ordered pair is written in the form x, y. Okay. Now for right now, this portion right here, oops, this portion right here, we are not going to be looking at in this unit. However, keep it in your definition. So we'll do the next two together, x-coordinate and y-coordinate. The x-coordinate is the first number of an ordered pair. y-coordinate is the second number of the ordered pair. Make sure you hit pause and get these copied down. Okay, so our first section, we are going to complete this graphic organizer of the coordinate plane. So we're going to work our way around this coordinate plane, filling in our blanks. So our first area, our first um, arrow is pointing down to where we have 0, 0, where the x-axis and the y-axis intersect, and that is called the origin. Origin is the beginning of anything, um, the beginning of our, uh, where we graph from, the beginning of our coordinate plane is the origin, 0, 0. You could even add that in if you'd like. Okay, the next thing we run into our quadrants. We'll go ahead and number all of our quadrants straight ahead. We have one, two is to the left, quadrant three is in the bottom left-hand corner, and quadrant four, oops, that's six. Quadrant four is in the bottom right. You could also have written these with regular numbers. One, two, three, four. They go counterclockwise those labeled in. Okay, now moving around down bottom right hand corner, this line is pointing towards the y axis. Making our way around our next box is pointing towards the x axis. Okay, and the x axis describes the entire x axis here. And finally, they have a, a point labeled, and we want to number that point. Um, in order to figure out what point that is, we'll start at the origin, and I'm going to make my way, oops, make my way to the left until I get to where that, that point is. So I went to the left four, and I went up three. So my coordinates are negative four positive 3. The x movement was 4 in the negative direction, the y movement was up 3. 
you do not need to draw this um, yellow line that was just for you to follow my movements. Now down below we have a question, we want to identify the x coordinate of the point negative 5, negative 7. This is my x coordinate, our coordinates are written, written x, y. So negative 5 is our x coordinate. And that's it. Ordered pairs and relations. Express the relation 2, 4, 0, 3, 1, 4, 1, 1 as a table and as a graph. First, as a table. Make a table with two columns. Label the left column X and the right column Y. Put each ordered pair in a row of the table with the first number in the X column and the second number in the Y column. Next, as a graph. Plot each point. The X coordinate tells how far from the origin to move to the right. The Y coordinate tells how far to move up from the X axis. Plot the point 2, 4, 0, 3, 1, 4, and 1, 1. Determine the domain and range of the relation. The domain is the set of all x coordinates in the relation. The range is the set of all y coordinates in the relation. Okay, so you just heard the video about um, relations and tables and graphs and ordered pairs. And take a look at um, the three ways of showing a relation. A relation is basically anything that's just numbers that are related to each other in some way, okay? So if we focus on some, some, uh, some of the vocabulary here for a second, take a look at our first, our first word. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. Relations can be represented as a table and as a graph. Okay, so add this uh, vocabulary word to your vocabulary page. But when you hear this us talk about relations, we're just talking about two numbers that are related to each other in some way an x and a y coordinate that can be put on a graph, it can be written in a table. Your next word is domain. You will hear the word domain a lot. The domain of the relation is the set of x coordinates. So the domain are the x coordinates. The range is the, uh, of the relation is a set of y coordinates. So anytime you hear the word range, we're talking y coordinates. Sorry, guys, I have a lot of extra slides here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so now that we know some basic information about vocabulary, the word relations, x-coordinates, y-coordinates, domain range, let's kind of start putting it together here. So example number one says to express the relation 2, 6, negative 4, negative 8, negative 3, 6, 0, negative 4 as a table and a graph. Then state the domain and the range. Okay, so the first thing we would do, and they did all this for you, um, the first thing they're going to have you do is create a table from these ordered pairs. What I want you to notice is our ordered pairs are in the order x, comma, y. So all of our x values, okay, all of our x values match the first number in our ordered pairs. Negative two, or positive 2, negative 4, negative 3, and 0, right? And our y-coordinates match our second numbers, 6, negative 8, 6, negative 4, all right? Oops. So when you're creating your table, your x, x values come first, y values come second. And if, if I were to, you know, rewrite these, oops. 2, 6, negative 4, negative 8, negative 3, 6, 0, negative 4. All right, it's just a different way of showing these ordered pairs. And then in our graph, if you look here, um, 2, 6 is right here. So I'm going to label that A. Okay, and you may want to do this too if you struggle a little bit with, with graphing. Um, let's take a look at our next one, B. I start at my origin, and I go backward to 4 and down to negative 8. And there's my B. 
Now, a little bit different on this graph, if you'll notice, your intervals are by twos. So I didn't count backwards negative four tick marks. I counted back to the negative four. So you have to be very careful because sometimes your intervals are by one, sometimes your intervals are by two, sometimes your intervals are by ten. So pay close attention to how the intervals are set up. Okay, C would be negative three, six. So negative three is going to be somewhere between negative four and negative two up to six. Okay, and there's C. And then our last one, D, is zero, negative four. So start at the origin. I don't go left or right at all because it's zero. I go down to negative four, and there's D. Okay, so go through and label your, your ordered pairs so that you can know what's what. And if you're still struggling, um, take the QR code in the corner and you'll see uh, a little bit of an extra assistance on this, this section. Okay, um, on a side note, I want you to take a look over on the left hand, um, the left hand side of this little sticky note about domain and range. <clears throat> if a term in the domain or range appears more than once, only write it one time. Okay, in example, one, the value six appears twice in the range. Okay, so here, here's what that means. If we look down at the bottom, it says the domain is negative four, three, zero, and two. The range is negative eight, negative four, six. Now if we remember, domain are the x values. Range are the y's, okay? So when I get my domain, I'm going to take a look at all my x values, which was 2, negative 4, negative 3, 0. And I listed, you list them all out right here. Now the range has a repeat, a repeated number, a 6. If you take a look up at our ordered pairs again, whether it's in the table, in the graph. Okay, so if we look at our table, my 6 is repeated, and that's okay. I just don't write it twice, is what they're telling you. If we look at the graph, do you see right here? Okay, look at the C and the A. See how they both have the same Y value? That's You could draw a horizontal line through them. That means we have a repeated range. All right. Um, another side note, if to help you keep, keep uh, track of domain versus range, domain comes before range in the alphabet, and X comes before Y in the alphabet. So whenever I'm trying to remember which number is the domain and which number is the range, I always remember that the D comes before R, and X comes before Y. So the D domain is the X. The range R is the Y. And again, let's go ahead and screenshot that QR code if you need a little more help. Okay, so what I want you to do now is in the sidebar, Oh, this didn't show up very well, did it? Hey, there we go. Um, so in the sidebar, here's what I want you to write. Okay, take a look at this statement here. Right here. You're going to write this statement in that sidebar, and you're going to fill in the blank. Okay. It's easier for me to see the relationship between the x and the y coordinates when they are shown as ordered pairs, a table, or a graph because. So you're only going to choose one, either ordered pairs, a table, or a graph. So you're going to write this statement down and then only write one of these choices and I want you to finish the statement. So it's easier for me to see, not me, but you, it's easier for me to see the relationship between the x and the y coordinates when they're an ordered pair, a table, or a graph. And when I say the relationship, <clears throat> I mean uh, you can pick out the domain and the range easier. You could see if there's any sort of pattern easier. Um, which of those three representations do you think you could get the most information out of? And you don't know a lot right now, so you're, you're just kind of going on your first instinct. There's no wrong answer. Uh, no answer is the only wrong answer. So you're going to write this in that sidebar of your um, uh, worksheet. Okay, so we're going to try out your new skills here for um, 
creating a table and graphing. So we're going to express the relation negative 5, 2, 3, negative 1, 6, 2, and 1, 7 as a table and a graph, and then we're going to state the domain and the range. Okay, so you have a few different ways you can do this. You could go through and you could write each x and y as ordered pairs, or you could go down and you could just write all of your x values and then write the corresponding y values. If you do them separate, be very careful to make sure that everything is paired up the way they're supposed to be. Now when we graph, we always start at the origin. And so for negative 5, 2, I'm going to go backwards 5 and up 2. For my next coordinates, I'm going to start back at the origin. I'm going to go to the right 3 and down 1 for 3, negative 1. My next ordered pair, I'm starting at the origin. I'm going to go up to 6 and over to 2. Remember, my intervals are going by 2, so be very careful. Next one, I'm going over 1 and up 7. And this one's going to be kind of in the middle. <clears throat> and now on the sidebar, they want us to label the domain and the range. And you can just say a D and an R as well. So my domain is negative 5, 3, 6, and 1. My range, now with the ranges, if you have a duplicate, you only have to write it once. Okay, we're going to talk about the domain having more than one later. <clears throat> but for right now, if the range has duplicates, you only write it one time. And you can make a side note about that too if you would like. All right, next example. We're going to take a look at an example with an actual real life situation. It costs $3 per hour to park at the Wildwood Amusement Park. Make a table of ordered pairs in which the x coordinate represents the hours and the y coordinate represents the total cost for three, four, five, and six hours. Okay, so we have our table here. It's $3 per hour. So after three hours, it'd be $9. So that's our first one here. So after three hours, $9. After four hours, $12. After five hours, $15. After six hours, $18. So think about what are we, what are we doing with our cost and our hours. Okay, think about that while we're going through this problem. For my graph, we're starting here at our three-hour mark. So at three hours, it's $9. At four hours, it's $12. Five hours, fifteen dollars. Six hours, eighteen dollars. Okay, so make sure that you're okay with seeing how this graph matches up and the table with our situation. Okay, so what you're going to do on this one is on our sidebar, you're going to write two answer to two questions. The constant rate of change is, and since the constant rate of change is blank, I could continue the table by blank. Okay, so I want you to think about this question in a second. We're going to go back to our last slide again here. Now, constant rate of change. Let's talk about that for a second. And I'll bring those questions back up. Constant rate of change. Anything that's constant, constant and consistent are very similar. Anything that's a constant rate means that there's a pattern. Okay. So there's a pattern, and that pattern can be counted on. That pattern stays consistent. It stays constant. So if we take a look at our pattern here, what is staying constant with our amusement park parking situation? Um, another way to put this would be if, if I gave you the number 10 hours without continuing the table or without drawing the graph, could you tell me? After 10 hours, what it would cost me to park? Could you tell me after 20 hours what it would cost me to park? Could you tell me for one hour what it would cost me to park? Whatever number popped in your head as to the, the pattern that allows you to figure out your cost, that is your constant rate of change. Okay, so let's go back and look at our questions. The constant rate of change is blank. What's the pattern in the parking price? 
Now, <clears throat> we has something to do with the three dollars. Think about how you want to write that, um, <clears throat> and and put it in words in the sidebar. The constant rate of change is blank. Since the constant rate of change is blank, I could continue the table by what? If I wanted you to continue the table down, what could you do to find more prices of parking? Okay, hopefully, oops, hopefully you wrote something like constant rate of change is three, okay, or three dollars. Per hour. Since the constant rate of change is three, I could continue the table by. Um, you could have said something like increasing each hour by one and each price by three dollars, something like that. So this is your own words here. All right, now down below, hopefully you still have some room. Here's what I want you to write. An equation that represents the cost for parking is y equals 3x. The y represents blank, the 3 is blank, and the x is blank. So I am telling you that an equation for the parking situation is y equals 3x. I want you to determine what the y, what that means the y is, what the 3 means, and what the x means. Take a look at your table. Look at the, if you're unsure, Look at the Y parts of the table. What do the numbers in the Y column represent? The X column. What do the numbers in the X column represent? What could that 3 possibly mean? And I want you to fill in these blanks. And then using that equation, I want you to determine after 12 hours how much would it cost to park at the amusement park. All right, let's see if you got it. Uh, Movie rental store charges $3.95 per movie rental. Make a table of ordered pairs in which the X coordinate represents the number of movies and the Y coordinate represents the total cost. So we have one movie, two movies, three movies, four movies. And then we want to get graph. So it's $3.95 per movie rental. I'm going to round this up to a $4. Okay. So for one movie, it's $4. For two movies, how much is it, will it cost? Hopefully you said eight. For three, it would be 12, and for four, it would be 16. Now, if you look at our graph, we have the x-axis and the y-axis that we have to label. Okay, um, if you're unsure which, which to put where, let's take a look at our tick marks. Across the bottom, we have one, two, three, four, five. Which of these two values, the, move, the, the number of movies, or the cost. Which one looks like it makes more sense that we go by intervals of one, two, three, four, five? Hopefully you said number of movies. And if we look at our y-axis, see how these numbers go f by intervals of two all the way up to twenty? If we look at our x values and our y values, it matches more for the y values. So I'm going to write, that says cost. Let me fix that. All right, so now we need to graph. So our first movie rental is over, start at the origin, over one, up to four dollars. Make this a little bit bigger, okay. Next is over to two movie rentals, up to eight dollars. Three movie rentals, twelve dollars. Four movie rentals, sixteen dollars. Now, one thing you'll notice that I didn't talk about on the last example with this constant rate of change, if you look at the graph, you see how it, you could kind of predict where the next point might be. Or you could, is there some, what, well, how could you describe the line that could be drawn if I wanted you to connect those dots? Okay, when we have a constant rate of change, there's something you're going to notice about those lines or about those, those points on the graph as well. Just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. All right, so let's take a look at a little vocabulary review, okay? Um, if you need to rewind to go get all these words, you can. You can look in your notebook as well. Um, these first four 
I do not believe are in your notebook. The last three are, all right, are in your, your worksheets. Um, but l quick little vocabulary review. And then let's take a look at our guided practice. Okay, so for our guided practice, express each relation as a table and a graph. Then state the domain and the range. So I'm going to do example one with you and then you'll test out yourself on number two. So the first thing I'll do is I'll fill out my table. With my x values, negative four, two, zero, negative three. My y values that coordinate are three, one, three, negative two. Now on your coordinate plane, you can assume that the tick marks are by ones unless you write something different. So if you would like to write the one, two, three, four, five and such, you can, or it can be assumed that they're by ones. It's up to you. If you want to go by twos or fours, then you have to write that down on the, on the coordinate plane. Okay, so we'll start at our origin, and my, for my first point, I'm going to go back to the left three, excuse me, to the left four and up three. For my second coordinate, back to the origin. I'm going to go to the right two and up one. From next point, I state the origin. I don't move left or right at all, but I go up three. And then my last one, I'm going to go backwards three to the left three, down two. And there's my point. Okay. Now for my domain and range, remember my domain is my x coordinates. So I have a negative 4, 2, 0, negative 3. And for my ranges, remember with the range, don't write down duplicates. I get 3, 1, and negative 2. Okay, so I want you to try number 2. Hit pause. And when you come back, it'll be done. Okay, so check your work. I actually did your uh, the points in different colors so that you could just double check that you put everything in the right position. Go ahead and compare yourself to number two. All right, let's take a look at number three. At a vacation resort, you can rent a personal watercraft for $20 per hour. Make a table of ordered pairs in which the X coordinate represents the number of hours and the Y coordinate represents the total cost. Now, if you wanna pause this and try it yourself, you can. If not, we're gonna go through it right now. So X is my total cost. So one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. If it's $20 per hour, that's $20 times one hour. Okay, so $20 an hour for one hour is $20. $20 an hour for two hours is $40. $20 an hour for three hours is $60, and our four hours will be $80. So we plot our points. Let's look at our X and Y axis. Our X axis are, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and if we take a look again at our numbers, which, which seem appropriate, it would be hours. And our Y axis is going to be our cost, okay? And you could say cost per hour or rental cost, be as specific as you want. And then we're gonna go ahead and graph. So 120, 240, three hours, $60, four hours, $80. And again, we have a constant rate of change here. If you notice that there's, there's a consistent increase by $20 per hour, you wouldn't draw a line, and we'll talk about that at a future time, but if you wanted to, you could draw a line. You could predict how much for 10 hours, how much for 15 hours, okay? Number four, I want you to take a look and think about how you could answer this question. How do tables and graphs represent relations? Okay, remember, a relation is like a pattern or a relationship between the two numbers. So if you take a look at example or, graph, or your guided practice number three, there's a relationship between the hours and the cost. You can look at that relationship in a table or you can look at that relationship in a graph. 
Okay, when you look at that relationship in the table, if I wanted you to come up with five hours in the table or ten hours, what do you notice between the numbers in that table that would help you predict a larger number of, of hours? If you look at the graph, how could you use the relationship between the x-axis and the y-axis or the hours and the cost to come up with how much it would cost for five hours or six hours? So think about how you would answer that question. And then I want you to rate yourself in this little box over here. Okay, how confident are you about relations? Check the box that applies. Okay, now it does say for more help there's the tutor. And um, how you get access to that is if you go back into the video, any, any screen that has the little QR code on it, um, if you take that with your phone uh, or the, the program on the computer, you can actually pull up an extra help video for that. All right, finally, you're going to do a little self-check um, to see if you're ready for your independent practice. You're going to do this in your notebook. So uh, label this section self-check and either screenshot the uh, QR code with your phone and do the self-check off your phone or use the computer program to get that QR code. Do the self-check in your notebook. All right, that's it. Um, you will find your assignment online so you know which problems to do for the rest of your packet. Um, there is independent practice e-help, which you're going to notice on your independent practice is any question that has the little house icon. Uh, screenshot this QR code for, um, for help on the, the questions that have the little house. That's it. Have good luck.